Hi everyone, welcome to the garden. As I said at the end of the last video, I'd like to try and capture the birds in flight. So I had a new idea about a bird feeding station. Place some seed into a bowl, dampened it down. Also dampened the tree down. The idea of this was the wet seed onto a wet tree that it would actually stick to the pines and to the branches which would give the birds a better opportunity to feed and for me to get a better to better a better shot rather than that horrible fence and it would also make them much safer for the birds as they wouldn't be feeding from the ground this has taken quite some time so Jed come on you need to do this a bit faster that's better So as you know I can't get out, I can't go and buy a, a nice bird feeding station. So I used what I had, I went and got some paracord from my camping equipment, attached it to the pergola. This gave me the opportunity to practice my knots for when I go hammocking. When I do go hammocking I like to use the trucker's hitch which enables you to get a really nice taut line. So using this system is much better for me and it's much better for the birds and much much safer. It was a it was on my mind that it's it the cats could easily get sneak out and get to the birds. It wouldn't be the bird the cat's fault, it would be my fault. For, for attracting the birds into the garden so it was something I was it was conscious of so here I'm just using the basic Prusik knot using this knot on the paracord enables you to attach anything to it and slide it to any position you want in this case it's obviously going to be the bird feeding station because as you know in the last video I was having issues of shooting in the shade. Using this setup, once I put this tiny little piece of wood through, which will just be locked that off, that gives me the opportunity to be able to slide the station anywhere I want. So when come later on in the afternoon, when the, the tree goes into the shade, I can actually slide this closer to me and bring it into the sunshine so that gives me the opportunity to shoot all day and it also means I can bring the birds closer to me rather than me trying to get closer to the birds so I got a stake planted it into the ground hopefully that the birds would come land on this and fly from that onto the bird feeding station it didn't take long for the birds as you can see straight on and straight onto the bird feeding station i actually videoed this with the, the gopro at 240 frames per second which gives you some really nice slow motion i'll show you this in real time <laughs> just shows you how fast they are they're absolutely like lightning so i attached another bit of paracord to the other side of the garden which enabled me to attach me 3b3 tarp just very roughly which made a nice little hide as you can see and that gave me a nice view across the garden to the bird feeding station and a better background this was the background I was after as you can see a nice bokeh and I can slide the fat bolt into, into focus. This is a view of the, the other side of the garden. As you can see, I've got some nice big Japanese maples. I had to move the swing bench to get the tarp up. But this gave me the opportunity, I could actually hide behind here. And this gave me another advantage point to um, photograph the birds. I could uh, quite easily slide that towards the Christmas tree or the little rose bush over to the right hand side and use this Japanese maple I actually attached my tarp to this later on 
as you can see the fat balls are directly in front of the little rose bush which give me some nice background so after all that I needed a blow and a cup of tea which I thought was quite well deserved morning everyone hope you are all keeping well right so I've changed the setup as you can see I'm in my little my little hide and I put a bit of paracord right across the garden and attached my DD3B3 tarp as you've seen earlier on in the video and I've got my little nice little stool or a little seat with a little table which means I can have a brew which is very important while I'm doing this bird photography I'm going to show you uh, me Panasonic G9 I've took a bit of my own advice and I've stuck a longer lens on it's a longer lens but it's a manual lens so that's what I was I was thinking could I capture these birds with a manual focus so the, the lens I've got on is a Helios 135 millimeter but on a micro four thirds it's a 270 equivalent so as you can see I've got the, the Panasonic setup it's everything's in manual that's the only thing with using these um, old lenses this lens I bought off a car boot sale I think I paid about five pounds for it <laughs> but it's given me 270 mil that's given me a really shallow depth of field so what I decided to do was was turn focus peaking on on the camera as you can see you can't see what my aperture is because there's no electronics so I can manually operate the aperture open and close which has given me a lot more options it's basically I'm in control of the camera the camera's not in control of me so as you can see the fat balls are all blue because that's the focus peaking but if I honestly change the focus point you should see the Christmas tree go blue so that means obviously the Christmas tree is now in focus go back to the fat balls so it's given me a very narrow depth of field this lens um, it's ideal for video I'll show you a couple of images that I've caught with this setup these images are actually images the G9 can shoot up to 60 frames per second which is lightning fast as you can see, it's not video, these are actual images. The next couple of images, as you can see, I wasn't having too much success with the manual focus, but it was giving me some nice bokeh. So I changed from the 135mm back to the 1260 and as you can see, I was having much more success with the focus. But it's all a learning curve. These next the images coming up are actual video with the 135mm Helios. I was coming out of the back door and the bird was feeding on the station so I just plonked it down on the tripod and started videoing. As you can see the difference from the bokeh of the earlier footage to this with the, the horrible shed in the background. This was shot on the G9 at 180 frames per second. But as you can see, it does give you some nice video. And then this big boy turned up. He's a jackdaw. But we'll talk about him later on in the video. Hi everyone. As you can hear, the rain's on. <laughs> it hasn't rained for ages. So, for anyone who hasn't been out camping, are you missing this sound? <laughs> Sounds great, doesn't it? There's not much activity going on in the garden this morning. Whether that's due to the weather, I'm not sure. So what I might do is, I might go in and go over the 
settings, what I've been using, and show you some of the, the features of the G9. Or I might just stay and listen to this rain on the tile. <laughs> Yep, yeah, it's coming down thick and fast now, as you can see. Um, just attached a couple of pegs while I unclip that. You can see outside. And you can see that I've got it trained onto the Christmas tree, which is giving me a better background. Oh, who's this? Is this the little robin? It is. Let's see if I can get a couple of shots. I can't believe this. I've actually got the robin. The robin's chick. I'm just waiting for the parent to come back. Give him some food. How fantastic is this? <laughs> oh, this is brilliant. I was telling Ozzy and the message that I'd see I seen one of the blackbirds feeding its young in the tree. But I didn't think I'd capture something like this. Constantly pruning. He's waiting for his dinner. Here he goes. I don't know whether that's a male or female. Yeah. Oh, where's he gone? I can't tell you how happy I am to have seen that. That was absolutely fantastic. So it looked like my luck was changing. The sun come out and so did the blackbird chicks. As you can see with this one, directly underneath my GoPro on the tree. But the battery had gone, so I didn't get any footage. The footage I did get when it jumped down into the garden, I was using the 12 to 60 millimeter. So I changed over to the Helios 135 millimeter which obviously, as you can see here, gave me a lot better footage. So while I'm on, I'd like to take this opportunity to mention a couple of other channels. I'd like to mention Stu Blogs, who's been sending me some really nice messages and giving me some, some help. I really appreciate that. I'd like to mention KG Photography. He's been doing some bird photography in his garden. He's got some fantastic images. And Teddy Wanderer, he's been also doing some bird photography He's got some really nice flowers and birds in his garden. And also Darren Knight, who's been doing something similar. As you can see, I got some nice images with the Helios 135mm. Some, uh, this is the blackbird chick, lovely plumage, and the blackbird itself. So I decided to move the bird hide over to the other side of the garden, which is very, very simple to do. As you see with the paracord, just between two anchor points and the, the tarp just hangs down. You could do this out in the wild, very simple to do, between two trees, or you could just hang it over a branch. But in, in my situation, what I'm doing here is I just place the chair where I want it, and then it's just a matter of sliding the tarp over your chair, and that's you good to go. So, having the bird hide on this side of the garden gives me the opportunity to photograph the birds flying across me rather than directly towards me as I was having focus issues. So you can see the, the, the camera pointing straight through the Japanese people, but the first image was of the, the female blackbird flying directly towards me. But then, as you can see, the tits started flying across the garden towards the bird feeding station and I, was, I managed to capture these images which for the first attempt is I'm quite pleased. As I said, I've been watching Darren Knight's video of his garden photography, and he said he'd, he'd been outsmarted by a robin. 
Well, you can imagine how I felt when I thought I was going to be outsmarted by a tit. <laughs> but as you can see, I was quite pleased with these images, and I also managed to capture the young blackbird having its first bath. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, the jackdaws made an appearance first thing. I already had my camera on my tripod, so I started clicking away. I didn't even know what these birds were, I had to look them up. Quite big birds with beautiful grey blue eyes. They didn't hesitate and flying straight over to the bird feeding station. I've never asked people to subscribe to my channel, and I'm not about to now. But what I would appreciate is if, you, if you've got this far and you've enjoyed the video, is to give it a thumbs up. As I do believe, this does help the channel. I also managed to capture some video of the jackdaws feeding. But this meant that the little blackbird had been waiting in the pecking order. I know, I'm sorry about the pun, but it does get worse. So as soon as the jackdaws flew away, the little blackbird who'd been waiting out in the wings, I know, it's getting worse, made a beeline for the bird feeding station. So, after the worst jokes in history, all that leaves me to say now is, is thanks for watching. I do appreciate all your comments. I hope you are all taking care and looking after yourselves and hopefully we can beat this disease and get back to what we love doing. I'll leave you with a couple of images that I took handheld with the Helios 135mm. So again, thanks for watching guys and stay safe.